we're back with another episode of Toon Talk TV. If you're new to the channel, you should hit that subscribe button. Listen to all the previous Toon Talks that we had, because all of them are fucking great. But, guys, we got a special, special episode today. It involves... I would say it's a Halloween special. It's our first Halloween special because it involves oh, yeah. a Halloween special. Uh, who wants to tell the viewers out there what they're going to be listening to today? So we're going to talk about the Poloni show. <laughs> and and uh, I have a proposal on how we format this episode, if you guys are interested. I think... Let me hear it. Instead of doing the normal, hey, what's your favorite, what'd you like about it stuff... Do you want to just go down the list uh, or the way it was shown, the shorts wise, and get into each one? Because personally, I have stuff to say about, I think, every short that was on the Polony show. Yeah, let's uh, do that. Yeah, I, like I got that. the list right here of all 13 episode, little shorts and their creator who created them, who, cre- who created and directed each episode. Great. Um, so, so for the viewers, though, before we proceed, yeah. the Polony show is a a, uh, a collection of animated shorts by different creators, different directors. And um, it's, a, it's a showcase brought to you by Justin Roiland. Is, did I miss anything? No, that's uh, you right. Could find it on, that's... Yeah, you could find it on Hulu. It's, out, it's more like a mini... It's the, the length of it, yes, it is a collection of shorts. There is a bigger narrative arc to the episode... Uh, and it almost makes it like a mini movie is basically what it is. It's like an over an hour long, so it's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I'm down with diving into each one. I got I got, got some uh, notes for each one. Um, I do want to recommend, though, whenever we fall on one that you personally liked, whether it be from a writing perspective or an animated perspective or just was your favorite one, let the viewers know which one it is. Cool? Okay, cool. Yep. All right, let's jump in with the first one, Banana. Wait, wait, bar. Bef- whoa, whoa, before wait. we even go with that, can we talk about the Polony show as a show, as like, as a full? Because there's a there's a few things I want to tell the audience mm. about that. The Polony show was actually an original pitch on uh, Justin Roiland TV. I don't know if this was a Channel 101 thing or it was just on his own website but he made the poloni show a long ass time ago and it featured marty which was morty the original <laughs> uh morty from rick and morty wasn't his and, grandpa uh, kind of rick like i mean yes. yeah 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 <laughs> he did the two he did the two voices and then leroy who's now on the poloni show so it was those three characters it was pretty much rick and morty or a version of them and uh leroy who was the host of the poloni show and we'll we'll drop that in the description below if you guys want to watch that short it's very funny uh and it's a good watch and i think it's a perfect it's a perfect uh I don't. I don't think he was planning on this, but I think it's a perfect uh, setup for a uh, a show that's made up of shorts. It's like the Polonies. Even in even in his initial concept, it seemed like uh, it was almost the per- like he he made the Polonies as hosts. It seemed like, and I could be yeah, wrong. Totally. I, I think he he made it. Just seemed like those jokes were playing off well, but. Taking that concept and just using it as host for any short show seems perfect, because he kept. So he, they even use <laughs> in the pit in the the pitch. It's like, oh yeah, and you'll see uh, you'll see our neighbors come in along the way, and like our special guests are uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Grandma Joe or like what or, or whoever. Yeah, yeah. But it, which is funny because he some of those characters that he started off the episode with that it says like featuring so and so and mustard yeah. man or yeah yeah those were actually in his original pitch like those actual characters were just like taken from that pitch oh that's awesome so um yeah and then also we don't normally talk a lot about voice acting i feel like we should but yeah. um i feel like Zach Cadell uh, the co-creator of uh smiling friends mm-hmm. uh he, I feel like he's working a lot with Justin Roiland lately, like with the uh, his video games and stuff. And now he's doing voice. At, he was the uh, Reggie, the little guy, okay. and uh, which so, I I don't know. He's got a good voice for for cartoons. Yeah. So the Polony Show is shit. is who are the three hosts of the Polony Show? There's Chartreuse, 
the sister, Reggie, the the one of the brothers, and then Leroy, right? Yes, yeah. Those are the three. So it's those three hosting a Halloween special for Hulu. Uh, and then the next character that pops in is Aunt Stephanie with <laughs> with baby long legs or <laughs> yeah, yeah some, I forget what his <laughs> yes, name is. Yeah. Um but let, before we actually you know dive into those uh the narrative arc of the show is they host a TV show of shorts and then it's they go trick or treating and it's the events that unfold during the course of one night. Um Yeah. During each special we'll we'll kind of, you know, talk a little bit about because there, there's little bitty nuggets of of information within the actual narrative arc of the show that I like, and I found I have a theory that I'll tell you guys later on in the in, in the episode uh, on where I think this show is set. But without further ado, the first short is "Banana Party" by Daniel Cole. Initial thoughts. I think they started it off pretty well. That was actually one of yeah. my favorite, uh, like. Just like I, I think they they play they set up the uh, the set list pretty well. Like they ended off great and they started off great, and then they put some good good choices in between. But that one I thought was well written and pretty and awesome animation too. So that was from, what was uh, that Titmouse? Was that Titmouse? Titmouse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, from that standpoint, that one felt more like in the animation vein of like a Rick and Morty or a Solar Opposites totally. or the actual Polony show itself. So it had that viewers out there, it had that similar animation style, which felt very natural to just go into as the first one. Before that short, uh, before they, they said all the names and who created all of them at the end of mm-hmm. the show, they, uh, I thought that he, that was a Justin Rowland short. I thought that that was just felt uh, that because way. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I looked up Daniel Cole, and I couldn't find anything that he did. So I don't know if he's just an employee that's at Titmouse that he uh, is pitching stuff and did a good job at. But, yeah, I really liked uh, the writing of that one and, and the, the characters. And, and I liked the, uh, the, the chick who kept bouncing on cars with the saggy-ass titties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, showed, they showed her, like, three times in that, like, two-minute short. <laughs> um. Yeah, that one was great. It started out pretty funny. It, it plays into like the the dude that always wears the banana costume. There's always a guy in a banana costume every Halloween. It it feels like. Um, yeah. But yeah, for people watching, if you do know anything about Daniel Craig, drop some info Cole. in the comments for us. Yeah, Daniel Cole. Yes, Cole. Uh, drop some info in the comments for us. Um, final thoughts on that one it was good like i i al you were right started off strong i thought that was a great one thought it was good i very ha- go for it brett uh, very halloween themed which yeah. some yeah. of these were um uh were questionable on if it was halloween themed <laughs> but um this one was and uh i enjoyed it it was a good starter so uh i think th- this is good to mention right off the bat i did see uh, like an interview of Justin Roiland just talking about this baloney show beforehand and like his selection mm-hmm. process and stuff. And it seemed like the majority of the, these creators and animators were um, a lot of his friends, a lot of people that he's worked with before. And, uh, and it, 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 he said it was a great opportunity to merge some of his favorite writers with, some of his favorite animation studios. So he That's tied cool. Oh, cool. so he's yeah. tied some of them together of people that n- didn't necessarily always work together. Um oh, cool. and it was interesting like you'd think you'd think that he'd have more of um like participate Justin Roiland participate in a lot of these shorts but uh like he said, like I mean, animation is a pro- is a is a long process. So it was it was hard enough to just make the Poloni part of it. You know what I mean? In a, <laughs> in a time yeah. that was the most <laughs> ambitious part, really. Right. I mean, it, it was the longest segment, and it was a show in itself. If you took out all those smaller shows, it would, still would have worked. Yeah. It had an arc. It had an ending. It was still good. Yeah. Right. And yeah. uh, even though, like, it's interesting because 
you don't necessarily have to know with delivery times and stuff. You don't have to know what show you're putting up next with the way that he did it. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. here's another yeah. short. And because it yeah. seemed yeah. like they were all kind of delivered almost like meeting the deadline as, as pretty close, pretty damn close. Because I guess yeah. I that's another thing with Halloween shorts. Like if we were asked to make a Halloween short that I mean, it'd be hard to like it, depending on how on how much time they gave us. You know what I mean? Like that you got to kind of yeah. base that, put that into it. Like, okay, I have six months to make my my best possible short that's going to be on Hulu. Let's, uh, you know, let's <laughs> work as hard to make make this make this possible. So, um, I think it was just interesting hearing him that he was more of a curator of these sh- of the the writers and the an- animators um, rather yeah. than being an actual participant. Which I'd say he was he was a huge participant because the Poloni part was equally yeah. or the best part yeah. about it. But yeah, sure. moving on, moving on. All right. Uh, the second short was Plopsy and Friends, created and directed oh, by we... Sidney Heller and Olivia uh, DeLorence. DeLorence? I- I'm going to say let's move on because it's not animated. This is an animation show. I say okay. let's... Okay. Well, I, well, even though I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. It was done by Stupid Buddy uh, Studios, which is um, what is it? Uh, the the longest one of the longest running Robot Chicken. Okay. okay, I, okay. It's. I mean, so I mean, like it You're was right. funny. I, yeah. I had a good time. Not the, animation. Let's move the, on. You know. The, well, we'll move on. But there's one thing I want to say about it is the entire okay. part where he talks about going and going swimming in the L.A. River, and. <laughs> This vortex is going to take you in there. <laughs> and then he's, he's yeah, like, yeah. Bobby, or he's like, Timmy, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to give you some coordinates, and I want you to come with a machete and hack <laughs> me apart. Like, <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. Okay, but yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah. That That is the only one that's not animated, so we will move on. Um, props, though, to, to Sydney and Olivia. They did pretty good. That was, that was a hilarious one. I assume um, that those the third- were the two uh, ladies acting in it. Right. Cre- maybe the creators I'm not sure. or, or were they not the... those were the creators and directors of the of that short oh i guess i just assumed so could that be, they were also the ones in it but maybe not yeah <laughs> uh number three was camp death lake uh echo kelman and nate kaywood i'm sorry if i pronounced those wrongs that my little john hancock is kind of scribbly but camp death lake what do we think so uh, the first thing I thought about this one was it had a very familiar style to – have you guys ever seen Nerdland? I have not. No. It's, it's a fully animated movie by uh, Chris – I believe it's, it's created by – it might have just been directed by Chris uh, Pranosky, who, mm-hmm. who's the owner of Titmouse. But I looked up Echo Kellum and, and Nate Kaywood, and uh, this wasn't done by Titmouse, and this – I've never seen anything by either of those creators. So I was just, uh, I was surprised that it, it wasn't, but the, I was a big fan of the animation style. I think it was, uh, I, it was unique. I, um, the, very fun to watch the extremely gory. It felt like, yeah. and then it was funny as hell too. They, they brought you, this like s- this classic trope of like a serial killer. And then they go into this whole montage of like, Oh, he has cancer. Let's heal him up. Like, like, like they love each other now. And then, and then he gets axed at the end, which was awesome. And then yeah, they bring it very, they re, they repeat the cycle again with the, the, yeah, doctor, with the doctor, which is so good. Um, it had a very, like that, op- the opening scene where it's like the girl running through the woods it had a very like shadow box feel where where the animation is actually happening behind um the 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 background setting basically uh which i which was one of the parts that i loved the best of that of that animation short it was good but yeah Brett, the uh <laughs> the montage of he a, a montage is always good whenever you can execute it and that one was done very well <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, moving I thought the, oh, we got we got any thoughts? Yeah, no, no. I was just gonna uh, chime in. I thought the uh, the just the backgrounds and the animation. I kind of tagging on to what you said of just like the shadows and the detail. Yeah, 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 I love that stuff. And what that was by Floyd County Productions. The animation, I think. 
they said for that. And yeah, they, which they did which one we'll more see again. They did one. They yeah. did yeah. another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, we'll um, talk about that later. But that was, that was awesome animation. Number four, the Dresden by Brian Warsaw. What do we think? Warsaw. 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 So I don't know if you caught this. We have done a Brian Warsaw animation before. Do you guys remember that? Hot Cross Buns to oh, Sorido oh, is Brian Weissel. Get out of here. Okay. <laughs> yes, all right. Yes. All right. Very cool. Well, let's cut so, that to make uh, sure that we know that that is him. So we'll be like, oh, yeah, Brian <laughs> oh, oh, him, our boy, yes, Hot Cross Buns. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. That one, who's who, the who, the main actor in that one? That was uh, um, Gilbert who? Godfrey. Gilbert That was Godfrey. really him? Yes. Oh, I. Was yeah. that really him? Oh, I thought that was he someone. Died. So he must have had to record that way, like before. Or maybe it I, wasn't I thought him. his last role. I didn't think it was if, him. I, I think got, it was someone basically pretending to be him. It was obvious that. Oh, voice. we gotta look that up. Yeah, well, well we fucked. If we, <laughs> there's no way it was him. We don't even. There's no him. way it was I think him. It was dude. <laughs> Let's look it up right, right now, man. Well, uh, yeah, Ken, yeah, yeah. Should we figure it out? Up? Let's figure it out. <laughs> Um, I mean, keep keep talking. On, I'll, just, I'll just look it up. All right. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah. So one uh, to have Gilbert Gottfried would is I thought that was him, and that would be amazing if it is him. But that he died. So that I thought his last role was God in Smiling Friends. But uh, it's it's and there was a funny story about him is uh, Michael Cusack and Zach, um, only they were so like starstruck about him they yeah. got him on a Zoom call and. He, his wife, they opened up the Zoom call to his wife just sitting there, and he's like, okay, Gilbert's ready. Can you proceed? And they're like, uh, uh is he mic'd? Does he have a microphone? Can he? And he's like, yeah, yeah. He, he, what do you guys need from him? And they're like, oh, we, we just need this and this and this. And he did it. And apparently he blew all the levels with his screaming. There was like <laughs> cell phone beeps behind it. But they were so afraid to ask him for more voice acting <laughs> that they just used it. And, the, <laughs> and they like the, there was like beeps and stuff that they covered up with like epic music. And and really, they, they had the epic music had nothing to do with it. They were just trying to hide the the <laughs> the, the wrongs <laughs> that they did in the recording. <laughs> But uh, but if this is him again, oh that's, my gosh! That's crazy. Okay, it's his final thing that he worked on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's cool. That makes it that much better. Um, this one was definitely it. It had that hot, hot cross buns feel, and it was the first one out of this list of shorts that I was just like, "Whoa, this is fucking nuts!" Like, what the fuck are they? The elevator scene where it just shakes all over the part. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was yeah. like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what is, what, what is he going for on this? <laughs> so Brian Weissel, I feel like he's got that same string of like, it, it's, it's the conversational like piece that you don't understand what's being said. Like they're saying all the right words, but you're like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, yeah, it was good. I mean, and now that we know that little nugget of information that this was his last thing that, that elevates it makes makes it that much better yep um yeah so apparently yeah. when uh when after he did it he i mean he was sick during the time when he recorded it and Royland said he didn't even know that he was sick and uh Damn. shit and uh let's yeah that's all i see on it interesting well, there you have it r.i.p my friend r.i.p my friend uh the fifth short uh, Bet It Was Becca, directed and created by Jamie Rodriguez. Um, this was the first one with minimal dialogue. It was ba it, For me, it felt more of like a visual animation because that's basically what it was. Uh, I thought it was very well done, just the different... How many times can you think of someone bobbing for apples? Uh, and I thought it was great. I thought it, I thought it was good. Visually, visually the pleasing. I thought it was this one was of, my favorite. Oh, really? I was going to say I thought this yep. one was one of my favorite animated ones, just because. Bing, 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 bing <laughs> Brett. It, yeah, yeah. It focused. So on this it. was the. Oh, go yeah, for it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I think this was my favorite because you don't get to see animations like this. People can't pitch these ideas to networks, or uh, they don't go on television because, in the, if you pitch something like this on paper. 
what do you say? Uh, you're going to a Halloween party and she bobs for apples and it looks cool. Like you can't say that, but it's, it gets this type of animation gets ingrained in your brain. You go to sleep and you're like, that's what you remember. <laughs> you have like it, like it, it reminded me very much of liquid television, which is almost what this is. It, yeah. it was, it, it was done in the nineties. It was on MTV and it was by a bunch. It was a, a collection of animated shorts by a bunch of, no name animators that eventually some of them blew up like Mike judge. That's where Beavis and Butthead started. But, but when I think of liquid television, I've got these like memories of these just like crazy animated things that aren't necessarily story driven. It's just mm-hmm. visually driven. And this was that for me. And when I started the short, I was like, Oh, this looks like, like stuff on new grounds or something like, yeah. like very uh, old, like, Reminiscent of like a, a early '90s animator YouTube vibe, but but then as it when she started bobbing for apples, I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit! This is like <laughs> extremely well done." Yeah. So so yeah, it was definitely my favorite. I uh, I almost feel like it it didn't start as like written as a uh, as like let's this is a story. I it almost felt like that someone was just doodling those someone yeah. j- eating apples and then uh yeah. and then decided to take that and turn it into a Halloween short. Um I it's also interesting you said liquid television because ju- when Justin Roiland was talking about this in that interview, he mentioned he was try they were they were trying to uh make their own trip tank liquid television. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I I think they accomplished that pretty well because it's it's a little bit of all of that. Uh, as ter- as as far as like animation, like kind of like you were saying, Brad, Brett, um, you call him Brett. It was appeasing to the eye, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was it was appeasing to the eye, and it had that feeling of someone sketching in a notebook. Here are all the different ways that she can eat apples. And then someone just, you know, flipping the pages like, oh, wow, that's fucking cool. Like it had a very well hand drawn aspect to it that I thought was cool. And just that whole end scene where she exits the party and it like turns into a vampire bat and just flies <laughs> off. It's fucking amazing. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. The sixth short. And I'm going to go and say it right now that this one was my favorite. Uh, Mega Hex Devil's okay. Night. So I got a few things, if you don't mind me starting off with this. This was created by uh, Simon Hanselman, Australian comic creator. And this was Floyd um, Country Productions who did this. Now, uh, the artist for this one is popular from their Meg Mog and Owl series, which sometimes features Werewolf Jones. Are, are you guys familiar with the series, this comic Strip series? Yes, I'm very not. much. I'm not. Uh, Tell me about it. Meg, Meg, and, Meg, Mog, and Owl. Uh, the premise is they're depressed drug users struggling with life, which I can personally relate with. <laughs> not that I'm a drug user, but everyone struggles with life a little bit. Um, you could find there, there's a really cool trailer of their of uh, Simon's most recent book on fan graphic books. We'll link that in the description. Crisis Zone is that the one you're talking about? That's the that's uh, the the they did that one last year. That was the pandemic. Book, oh, okay. But they, they have right. a new one yes, coming out. Yeah. Um, you could head. So the really cool thing is if you head over to the artist's Instagram page, they have a ton of like behind the scenes, like backgrounds, character drawings. Um, they wanted they hand painted out. They hand painted all the backgrounds through watercolor of this short because they wanted it to feel as uh, handmade as they do their actual cartoons. Um, the voice cast for this, I don't know if you picked up on a few of them, but Macaulay Culkin was Mog, the cat. Uh, Emma Chamberlain was Meg, the witch. Uh, Dave Foley was the owl. And then my man, John Glazer, was Werewolf Jones. The best. Nice. Yeah. The best. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, this one, this one hit checked all the boxes. Like it was just, I thought it was very well done. Uh, love the party aspect, punch people in their 30s, doing rails of coke, then what happens when they go trick-or-treating. Uh, so for me, it checked all the boxes. This was my favorite one of the bunch. 
So I, um, I'm familiar with Simon Hanselman from Instagram. They, he, he did a daily comic. And uh, when I first started getting into him, he did a daily, one daily comic every day throughout the pandemic and it became a series. So, uh, I didn't really follow the comic that like that much, but mm-hmm. it, I was just vi- more visually drawn to the style. And you'll like this, Al. I in an interview of his once, uh, someone was interviewing him and saying, um, "So wow, this is like one co- like a, a comic a day you'd, for the entire pandemic. Like, how long did this take you?" And he goes. 3,765 hours. And they're like, what? And, but, and who's goes, counting? Yes, I ca- but who's counting? Yes. But who's counting? No, no, no. He said, he said I, I log all my hours and I calculated. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Just, yeah. Figure out your worth, man. It's like, it's yeah. like you look back and you're like, was that worth it? I don't, I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> but, uh, he also uses food coloring to, yeah. p- as the base for his colors. I will of say, paint, of painting. I think so. that was the backgrounds in that animation were my favorite backgrounds out of all of them. And I, I didn't know why I really didn't know why. So it's, I, yeah. I think it's interesting that you were saying that cause they did feel, um, they felt like the most, the, like, I don't want to say gritty, but like the, like the most, uh, work was put into it. I, it, yeah. it hand drawn. It felt like they were all yep. like, like hand, yep. hand drawn every single one. And every single time, that will beat out any animation that you you put less work in. For for me, I, I I notice it right off the bat. I feel like my eyes are drawn to to animations with just uh, uh, when I find out like oh yeah we put a ridiculous amount of time into that background. <laughs> oh of course yeah that's why I like it so much. Yeah, um, but yeah that Wait, one that was that was my boy. That was my good one. So. Tell me about that food coloring thing. Like it's it's not it's not water paints. It's... I didn't. So I didn't. I really didn't. The, someone asked what your materials are for for doing stuff, and I I'm if I'm I'm not. Sure, I might be wrong about this. I think he switches up materials a lot. Like sometimes he changes stuff. So I don't know if this one was the, the using food coloring for the base. Okay. But someone asked him once on an interview what. Uh, are your materials? And he said, for this comic, I use uh, food coloring as a base for the colors. So, I, which I thought was so strange. If you go to the Instagram page, there's there's one clip that shows you like all the color palettes for each character, and in the description of of that photo, he he tells you what he used like the to make those colors. And one of them, he okay. just says food coloring, like watercolor. And food coloring and, and a few other things, but awesome. That's it's, cool. It, yeah, it's fucking great. Um, so it, there's there's after this short in the Poloni show. By this point in the actual, arc I know of you're the cartoon, say. At this point in the arc of the actual cartoon, they've they've uh, had to take little long legs trick or treating, and he run. They come across um, uh, Doctor Tumis. Who is chasing uh, Daniel Carvey? Oh wait, it's his real name is Dana Carvey. He's William. He's wearing a Daniel Carvey mask, and he turns people into <laughs> uh, to uh, meat lettuce or what is it? Meat, meat lettuce? salad? Me- no. Maybe meat salad. Meat salad. Isn't so, it? Isn't it Dana Carver? <laughs> Dana Carver, and yeah. he's wearing yeah, a Dana, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel Carvey Car- mask. Yeah, <laughs> Dana Carvey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so in after this short. There's a scene where they run into the serial killer, and he says, "You guys would look great with some Parmesan cheese <laughs> and a little crouton." Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, if yeah. you picked up in one of the episodes or the first episode of Rick and Morty's new season, they go to a new universe where everything's the same except they say the word Parma instead of Parmesan. They say Parmesan. So. I'm throwing out some connective tissue there and saying this Polony show was set in that universe of Rick and <laughs> Great Morty. Great callback. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, so then the, the next short is, I thought this one was pretty funny, but it's Right Behind You 10 by Joel Haver, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Hilarious um, name. This was one of the funniest <laughs> ones to me, but yeah. yeah. Um, the it, old it, nothing it, scary happens for 50 years trick. Yeah. <laughs> So 
So the premise of this short is a guy gets scared on his birthday, passes a bill to outlaw anything scary, including Halloween. Uh, and then you got to see what ensues. Go watch, go watch the short to, to see what happens after that. Big uh, thing about this one. You guys notice the animation style? Very similar to what you're seeing right now on a dumbed yeah. down scale. <laughs> do we want to go into uh, that or no? Do we even want to? Let's do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I'll yeah, talk yeah. about do that. Do it. Do it. So there, he's using a, uh, a program called EB Synth. And uh, basically what it does is you take um, a camera of someone in, in someone actually acting live action stuff. And you com- you basically turn every single uh, photo in uh, uh, turn it all into images and then you take those images and throw it into a program called EB synth and use and basically draw draw over those images that you see and it it artificially creates a cartoon out of however many drawings you you decided to draw in frame so for this one you'll see a lot us getting a lot blurrier than you will in in his animation because he put a lot more drawings of frames in <laughs> but uh but basically same deal it's it's kind of like a i wouldn't say it's, it's a quicker like, way to animate i think it's no, it's no it's a uh it's it's just a cool way to turn something in real life into an animation i think it's if you're all- a film creator and you don't know how to animate and want to animate, this is probably the easiest access into the animation realm for you. Because it's, it, you're basically taking a film that you, you created uh, and then tracing over it pre- yeah. pretty much, which is in, in the animation world called rotoscoping. So, and, and then you take an, and then AI will pre- almost build that for you up. So it's it's essentially a time lapse. Like a time lapse is just a video, but instead of recording, it's just snapping a bunch of photos over and over and over and over and over again. And then when you push play, it looks like animation is happening. That's exactly what what this is. It turns the video into photo, and then they hand draw over those images and create an animation. But the benefit is you can draw a completely different background. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, it, and yeah. you could you you don't need a set in this in the you don't in as far as like actually filming, you just need a green screen or whatever, pretty yeah. much. But um uh if we go and he's got a cool background actually. So he has he puts out a piece of Joel Haver Haver. Uh he puts out a piece uh, like a video animated or not animated once a week on YouTube. And cool. his latest one was with Justin Roiland. I don't know if there was a I scratch your back, you scratch mine type thing, <laughs> but uh, he was in the, le- like, f- I think four days from when this is being created, like four days ago, uh, and put it, it's a hilarious short. And uh, so we'll link that in the description below. But uh, Justin Roiland's in that one. And it's it's animated the same way that that this is and uh, that you the, the behind you tin was made the good old 50 year nothing happens trick um that was that one was that's hilarious uh so the ne- the next short is slaughter cafe created and directed by david firth um this one was pretty nuts like just i'm gonna say that just fucking nuts uh thoughts from this i like one. this one a lot i like this one a lot <laughs> i thought it was creepy as yeah. hell i thought it was i, I yeah. thought it was a good premise and uh this was da- David Firth is the salad yeah. fingers guy. <laughs> yep. So uh, <laughs> um, it was cool. I actually, I, I, there was parts of it that made me, uh, m- made me laugh. And I, I, I thought the, one of the best parts was, <laughs> so, okay. So the premise of this is um, uh, a, a, a cannibal restaurant of, of people that are, are giving their bodies to be eaten. So it's not like they're, they're taken They're They're, uh, they're doing this willingly. Um, and <laughs> when <laughs> one of the, the, so the dinner for the night, which is this guy who's waiting to be killed and served, um, for dinner, his mom shows up at the door and is all crying and saying like, oh, I, I know, I know he did it willingly, but, 
you said that you'd give him 10,000 likes on his social media, and he, he's not anywhere anywhere near that. That's not fair. <laughs> She's, and the, the server's like, well, well, we'll see what we could do about that. We'll see what we... We'll retweet it. We'll retweet, yeah. it. Another we'll retweet it. That was good. That was good. Um, you know what? Uh, David Firth, too, is shrimp from uh, Smiling Friends. Oh, okay. That's one yeah. of my favorite characters yeah. in Smiling Friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, that. so this, I don't know if this is this is true or not. This is me, again, pulling at these, these little strings. But for me, that felt like what, how far do people go in order to get likes and followers what would they do? And in this case, this guy is going to turn himself into a human buffet in order to get enough likes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that one was good. Um, so by this part in the short, they've escaped the, the haunted house. Chartreuse is gone. And they're arriving at... Oh, <laughs> the, the funniest part. Uh the 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 guy performs a child's play on the little doll that little long leg he's doing a child's, he's doing a child's play, play. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so that that just happened after this short airs and then they they're trying to find aunt stephanie because they're tired of little long legs cuz he fucked up their entire halloween special um so the ninth ninth short is the creek down the street by, created and directed by whom, Brett? Michael Cusack. There we go. Smiling Friends, YOLO, Crystal Fantasy. He's our boy. Yeah. Uh, what do we think? I thought that this one was the arguably not Halloween uh, <laughs> themed one. <laughs> Least at all. Halloween. I feel like he yeah. made this one and then he was like, how can I make this Halloween? Oh, at the end of the episode, we'll say, oh, it's Halloween, right? Yeah, it's Halloween. And then that's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I, you could argue, arguably say that he's busy as hell and just yeah. they needed yeah, to yeah. they needed to put him in there because he's he's huge right now. And it's like. Yeah. And he, they're probably like, what do you got for us? And he's like, he, here we go. <laughs> yeah, he's working on Koala Man, which is another Hulu special. Yeah. Uh, he d- he does the he's second doing... season of YOLO Crystal Fantasy is coming. Yeah. He does Smiling Friends. He's he's, he's doing a, a guy ton right of now, shit right dude. now. He's doing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, that one, not that much one for movement me, it, in that one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. No, it was not, not much at all. Very dialogue driven, which is which was funny because he does have some really unique conversations in his cartoons that make me laugh that are just funny. Um, but yeah, that one was good. Uh, shall we move on to the 10th short, which was sure. shitty Beetlejuice? <laughs> Uh, Mike That's exactly Chill- what it was. <laughs> Mike Chillin <laughs> and Jordan Harris. Uh, this one for me was, I would say, one of the funniest ones for me because it, it was just you don't. It has an element of mystery to it. Like, what could this guy have said that this tiny little demon basically was like? Hey, I'll give you some wishes. All you got to do is say that right there on that paper but you got to say it in public <laughs> you got to say it you got to scream it you got to say it <laughs> yeah um what did you, what did you guys think about it that reminds me so much of that rick and morty episode of where the cat uh won't tell won't say his like oh, its yeah, origin yeah. story and and like they have to erase jerry's, jerry's. mind or is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it's so like so violent and I, or whatever yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but it was good, yeah. But it was basically it was Beetlejuice, man. It was yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. The, pre- the plot like, of Beetlejuice. It, yeah. It, it never said anything Beetlejuice, but then it was titled "Shitty Beetlejuice," which was, I think, the most fitting title for any of these <laughs> because that's exactly what it is. But whatever. Um. So then, at this this before we get into the next short, at this point in the the story, they get to where Aunt Stephanie is, and. Through the course of the episode, they're getting giving us classic movie tropes. Dr. Tumis is obviously Dr. Loomis from the Halloween. We get a, a Jason Voorhees like slasher. We get a child's play. And then this part we get witches, a, a cult, and the 
uh, Hellraiser puzzle box. <laughs> it's where we've arrived now. Um, the 11th short is Killer Bathtub, created and directed by Rafilio. How do you say that? Is that is that right? Raf- I don't Rafilo? know. Rafilio? Rafilio? I know, Rafilio? I know he's... Uh, his Instagram... And like he puts out a YouTube short that's all in Spanish, so I, I don't know what how to pronounce that though. I would say that this was one of the most unique premises in these cartoon shorts. A a substance that once something goes into it, you forget that it ever existed, which is insane. That's a pretty good premise for for anything. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, no, this one was just hard to follow for yeah. me. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, as, as it, it, it was more the, eye candy for me. But uh, yeah, oh, dude, uh, but I, as far like if they just would have turned off the volume, <laughs> and I, I would have watched that for days. <laughs> uh, this almost goes into the same boat as uh, my favorite one, as far as animation goes, because it was nuts visually. Yeah, but, it was, but as far as the the cr- like that was writing. <laughs> I I couldn't tell you what happened. Dude. I have no idea what the fuck happened. Yeah, it was definitely that's why it was definitely far out there. But essentially, the premise is that there's this black sludge that these aliens create that whatever goes into it, people forget that they use it. So in one example, he throws a comb into it, and people forget how to comb their hair. Like, and so their hair is just all fucked up, and this. At the very middle part of the short, his mom gets consumed, and at the very end, they're like, um, "You're adopted. That's why you, you didn't go. That's why you didn't re- remember anything when your mom went away." <laughs> and then it ends. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was cool to was watch. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm glad it was in there. I'm glad because because as far as like uh, if I were to rank them all in animation, this would be my second. Okay. Like, but but if if we're rating this in terms of like uh, humor, writing, animation, like everything as a as a big picture, I feel like this one could have used some work in okay. the writing department. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> the twelfth one, you got two more left. Two more left, short in the shorts. The twelfth one was an alien Halloween claymation by Lee Hardcastle. This one. The tits. It was pretty cool. Claymation always blows me away. I mean, it. <laughs> you don't really need much of a storyline for it. You could just kind of, if you make it look cool, it's going to be a top-notch animation. One of the parts of it that kind of, I, I, I kept trying to think, like, how do they do that? Is all the movement of the camera yeah. while while these the fights and it was like and, Matrix Matrix style almost they would do right. something and then the camera would shift and then it would it would continue. But it, it was like smooth shots of the yeah. camera moving around while all this action is occurring, and uh, I'm I'm uh, it's it's just impressive. It's claymation is hard work, and I mean not that I would know. I feel like that would be a cool thing to to take on, but uh, yeah, it's. That one was impressive. I liked it. It was good. Um, so after this short, our Poloni friends have uh, fought off the demon child play doll, Mr. Stuffles, I think is what his name is. And uh, Little Long Legs or Tiny Long Legs has used his superpower. He's got his arc, which is he can untie himself using his long legs for when he gets in trouble <laughs> by his mom. Um, they get the box and then they, they cut to our last short of the night, which is slash Tronaut by Jacob Hare. This one uh, was my fave. This one was my fave. <laughs> was, was this yeah, it? Yeah, it's right. a good yeah, fave. Yeah, it was my good fave, yeah. Lead the way out. I just think it was, uh, I think it was very well written for a Halloween short. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's it had everything. It had your your slasher in it. It was it was funny as hell, dude. They, they how they started it out with just like we pissing hate science, science. pissing on it, <laughs> yeah, pissing on science, pissing on Look. science. <laughs> um, go back, old even, man. We're busy pissing, pissing on, on science, science books. <laughs> and then like if 
if you don't, if you don't like science, then don't go over there. And they basically just move the camera, and it's a yeah. giant spaceship right there. Oh, it's perfect. Um, uh, so this was. So I, I I didn't I'm not gonna lie I di- I didn't look too much into Jacob Hare is that that's that's who yeah. did this one yeah. I tried finding stuff there there he does have a YouTube channel with someone else where I think there's like two storyboards on well, there. take that so, so I'll, here I'll this. link it below he's he works on a lot he's he's does a lot of the storyboarding for uh, Rick and Morty oh cool so and cool. for like cool, the, cool, some cool. of the bigger some of the some pretty cool episodes. Uh, as of recently. So I'm sure, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, Justin Roiland is just like, oh, you got something? Yeah, definitely, definitely put this in there. Um, <laughs> that was a Titmouse one. Um, and then, uh, well, I mean, what else? I I thought it was pretty. I just the kill, I thought it was the kill scenes were. Oh, were, were gory as hell. They were, they were they yeah, were they were gory as hell, too. <laughs> the piss, pissing in and his face at the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's such an unlikely uh, villain, but so yeah. funny and good. Like it was just like an astro. Like dude, when he fucking shut his face in that with the uh, the visor for his, the his, yeah, yeah, so good, so good. <clears throat> um, it did. There, there was. There's a funny part in that one where um, they the, it, there's only two of the there's three kids. There's only two of them left. And they're like, dude, he's a fucking nerd. We can bully our way, like bully, bully our way out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and the other guy goes, yeah. There. The guy goes, um, dude, I know that I'm super buff, and you think I'm a hard body, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I thought that was funny. Where you know they just they basically do say that that's a nerd out there. We can bully our way out of this. <laughs> um, I think that's some of the best writing because it's. They know that they don't have time to build any characters, so they just yeah. get into it with broad topics like science sucks and like they and they're yeah and they're yeah. and they're their nemesis. The, I mean, the the guy that they're fighting is is basically embodies exactly Peak exactly yeah. Yeah. Peak, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 oh it's perfect. Um, so then by this point we come to the end of the Poloni show. They've had their adventure. They're they're back where they started character is arced out um and then it ends on a little surprise which i thought was hilarious they you know i won't spoil it for people but another horror trope happens towards the end culminating in in this entire little special that they had also another little treat did you guys notice that one of the featuring acts at the beginning showed up at the end did you not notice that who he was the puppeteer (laughs) He was <laughs> puppeting chartreuse at the end, but uh, uh, but but in one of the initial like featuring like, and there was like some guy, the puppeteer, pretty much, but which I thought was funny <laughs> in the in the black uh, suit, like the green screen suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was Jim Henson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jim Henson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought the, the as a as a special, I thought this was fantastic. It was great. I hope. My hope is that they do something like this next year. Maybe some of these animators come back. Maybe it's a whole new batch of them. But I can see something them running with something like this. What do you guys think? I could see him doing just like Hulu, just making hol- like holiday specials pretty much based off just this. Like any excuse to get new animators in there and uh, and just taking a holiday and running with it, which I think would be cool to use this for. Yeah, I feel like you don't see many trip tank liquid television style shows out as of recently and I feel like that was cool to see some of the the animators that are I mean, they're not amateurs at all. They're they're all big yeah. name animators no. that are uh yeah. I just have a chance to basically animate whatever you want and we'll in in this Halloween vein and we'll put it on the show. I thought I thought that was a cool concept. Would would you I mean I know that we're on board with with the premise of this but like would you want them to do like the stoop like the Poloni show Labor Day special or you know just oh, the stupidest would, Halloween the yeah the stu- like, uh, stupidest, don't don't yeah. pick any of the big holidays yeah. pick like dumb fucking holidays Earth, and the make Earth a special, Day special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 um anyhow you know for for this episode we wanted to keep it simple and just talk about our favorite tune of this 
this week was the Poloni Show. You can check that out on Hulu. Uh, be sure and head over to the Patreon account, you know, uh, patreon.com backslash we are the television. Check out all the merch that's there and the behind the scenes content. Be sure and like this video. Give us a subscribe. Uh, before we go, guys, what's going on this weekend? Horror Film Fest tonight. Oh. Nicktober. Oh. There's Can't another wait. big day coming out on Michael Jordan number day. Oh, yeah. Uh, Our birthday. Yeah. Boo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> another <Yeah>. year older. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, we hope you guys like the video. Um, tune in for the next one.